Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for this second crit session and I'm looking at two bodies of work supplied by Karine and Dr. Tang. Thanks to them for sending the images through to me and in this particular video I was trying a new method of recording and the sounds a little bit tinny so I hope that doesn't distract too much from the watching experience. I'm going to get right into the critique and we'll start with Karine's work. Hi Karin, thanks very much for submitting this work. She did this in Gestadt in the Swiss mountains in the winter of 2021. I really like this image, I, particularly this figure. It looks like a human being, but it could well, you know, it could also be a statue. But it's just beautifully silhouetted against the white. There are a lot of other elements within this frame. These nice rows in the foreground, this very ancient looking tree, and also the shapes of these windows. I really like them. And they provide a nice rhythm in the background. And then it's repeated again there. I like the color as well. It's a nice warm, rich brown that permeates throughout. So it's almost a monochrome in an image, but brown kind of tainting the, the blacks. I feel that this framing of the image allows my eye to escape the content. So I tend to move off to the dark exterior, which in a way is, is a pity because all of the relevant information is down here. For me, most of the exciting details are within this framing of the image. And I'm drawn more strongly to the figure. She becomes more prominent. You've still got the repetitions here of the windows. And you've got the lines in the foreground. But your eye rests over here on the thirds. This tree nicely is positioned with this on the third as well. So I would say that given this scene, this is what I would make for me the strongest image. I prefer the color to the monochrome because of the browns are really rich. But I think what this does do by making it into black and white, one can sort of squint one's eyes and see the details that are most interesting. And immediately this black figure pops up. And I really like these old ancient tree branches. Where I'm getting to with this crit is that I'm finding I'm not getting a hold of an actual subject. Now, with landscapes, one can be fairly kind of broad in one subject matter, but one has to have something to hold all of the images together. Already, there's a little bit of loosening up because the first one had a figure, and this one doesn't have a figure. But the common denominator is you've got a nice triangle here and a nice line running there and you've got the foliage in the background. But what I find is that the subject isn't riveting enough to hold me in the picture. So I tend to wander off onto the left. So it's a very peaceful scene. And if this wasn't here, then I'd say, well, nice, peaceful landscape. If one did something like this and very roughly, of course, but, oops. You didn't have that whites in the foreground, and then you just had this very nice, clear landscape. That would be a very kind of appealing photograph. I like the, the sort of browny, reddish tinge to it. But then I would also say that it doesn't have a lot to kind of 
hold it to the previous image. So then I was already beginning to say, what are you trying to tell me and what are you, what is the whole story about? Let me give you a reframe of this picture. What I've done is crop a, crop a bit on the left, so I'm taking it in a bit. But still, this, you know, it's a nice triangle, but it's not, it's not that interesting. It's not kind of holding my attention to think, sure, okay, what is that? I can see it's the roof of a house, and yeah, but I don't know if this scene then becomes dramatic enough or has enough to complement the last photograph or even to hold its own. We again getting nice brown tones against a clear background. This treehouse structure also has very nice shapes and they grab your attention. There's shapes within shapes and a nice diagonal leading you into the frame. However, let me go back to the open picture. I find this is what's interesting to me. Not so much the combination of this and that and the house in the background. Somehow they're competing for my interest. If I crop this down, suddenly the treehouse becomes the central focus and I'm not pulled off to the right to that other structure. And then one can start to look at the abstract nature of this photograph and get drawn in by the shapes and the lines. You can see in this monochrome extreme silhouette of the original scene, you've got interesting shapes here as well. This whole structure becomes one shape and this in the background becomes another shape and the vertical lines remain holding your gaze. So let's go back to the original frame. If I wanted to somehow make this photograph more interesting, you have to decide what you're looking for. Now, are you looking to show us a picture of a tree house? Or are you looking at abstracted lines and shapes? And once you've decided between those two things, then you can say, okay, how am I going to photograph? If it's just abstracted shapes, maybe you, if you move to the bit to the right and you got rid of the structure in the background, then it would become more of an abstract. If you were just going for the overall abstract nature of the combination of elements, then you would have had to photograph it in a far, far more contrasty manner. You, you know, you could, you could have just done this. And then it becomes far, far more of a message about this tree structure. So, so far with these three images, we see some continuity, but there isn't a strong enough theme coming through to say, okay, I can see, Karine, what you're doing, and I'm getting your message loud and clear. And unfortunately, it becomes more confused as we move through the photographs. There's a German painter called Caspar David Friedrich, and he produces these scenes that come from probably a similar world, but they have an atmosphere and a feeling that becomes his signature manner of painting. But that I'm not getting from your photograph so far. If you look at this photograph, I, I like the way the figure is walking up the road. And there's, there's nice diminishing perspective which draws you in. And I like the way the figure is moving. And there's a sort of loneliness, isolation about this image. I think what it doesn't have is that you've lost the browns really there's there's probably not a richness of browns and so you lose that continuity say with the others it has beautiful elements to it but what is it actually telling me and how does it fit in with the other photographs if you take the figure out then it becomes more of a story about shapes and angles so you're getting very nice line here but that's what this story, that's what this photograph would be about. Nice line coming down here, 
this is telling a different story. So you're not going the next step to say exactly what am I trying to show. I can see it's a beautiful area, but, but the photographs aren't working together to produce a holistic story. I'm going to show the other photographs for you to kind of get an idea of the contrast between those first ones and the, the other ones I'm going to show you now and they're not really telling enough of the story to draw a viewer in. Hi, Dr. Tang. You say in your summary that these are the anti-new shots from your new shooting sessions and that basically these are the women that you're photographing and for a few shots you are keeping their clothes on. I think you've kind of given a lot away already before it starts because when I look at the set of images they, they all have a very nice technical qualities to them. You can see the background and you can see the hair of the woman stand out against the background. So technically I feel that in a studio setting you've, you've got a lot right. Where I think that you've fallen down is that, as you say, these are just a few little shots at the beginning or the end when the women have their clothes on and then you get on to the real stuff, which are the nude shots. Now, I couldn't show the nude shots, but I'd be interested to see if they had more kind of a connection between you and the model, because I'm not seeing that come through in these clothed portraits. This shot and this shot, for me, say something. They, I can feel a rapport between you and the model. I get a sense of who the model is. Let me go back to the other one. There's a sense of the human being behind that. And also that somehow you are conveying an aspect of them to us, the viewer. I'm going to show the other photographs, but as a viewer, one can get drawn into the set of photographs because technically they have a lot going for them. But after seeing them all, one lands up feeling there's something missing. And for me, that is a connection commitment to what you do. But as you say, you know, you just shot these up at the end or beginning of a shoot. So they kind of a side order rather than the main event. So what I'm suggesting is perhaps if this is what you want to do, then just do that and work at the shots. So sit the model down, build a rapport, chat, then start shooting and try and feel when that connection starts to come through because you're not going to communicate to us, the viewer, anything about them or you, or about your connection. So I think I'll leave it there and feel free to send me some more images where you, you know, you could just work with one or two models, but what I'd want to see is something coming through into the photographs that leaves me feeling an emotion or wanting to know more. Thanks again to both Corinne and Dr. Tang, and I hope that my input was of value and that the crit session in general was useful for all of you watching. See you again next time, and thanks. Bye.